Sehr geehrte Damen und Herren, ich glaube, wir können anfangen. Ich freue mich sehr, dass Sie heute Abend gekommen sind, um bei dem Filmscreening von Day After Day, dem neuesten Film von Alexander Hick, dabei zu sein, in dem die Mae West von Rita McBride zentral steht. Vielleicht zunächst ein paar Worte zur Mae West und zu Rita McBride, was für mich auch so ein bisschen persönlichen Hintergrund hat, weil tatsächlich 2003, als ich in Düsseldorf zu arbeiten begonnen habe, die Mae West ein sehr viel diskutiertes Projekt war in der Stadt Düsseldorf. Das hat damit zu tun, dass A. Rita McBride seit 2003 Professorin ist an der Akademie in Düsseldorf, aber vor allem auch mit der Tatsache, dass es ganz viele Diskussionen gab zu der Zeit in Düsseldorf über Kunst im öffentlichen Raum und immer wieder die Frage im Zentrum stand, wie kann man sicherstellen, dass man künstlerische Entwürfe hat, die von der Qualität, aber auch von der Relevanz ähm, herausragend sind. Und da hat Düsseldorf erstaunlicherweise immer auf München geguckt und ganz begeistert immer auf die Kunstkommission, die es in München gab und insbesondere eben auf die Mir West, äh, den Entwurf von Rita McBride, der eben als Beispiel dafür angeführt wurde, wie idealerweise äh, so eine Auswahl stattfinden könnte oder aussehen könnte. Rita McBride für ein Projekt im öffentlichen Raum einzuladen, ist fast schon zwingend, weil wer ihre Arbeiten kennt, weiß, dass der städtische Raum eine sehr große Rolle darin spielt, aber auch die Frage nach der Öffentlichkeit von Kunst. Und ein Beispiel, was Sie vielleicht auch hier in München noch kennen, ist die Arbeit Arena, die 1999 hier im Kunstverein gezeigt wurde. Das ist eine große Tribüne, die hat ähm, den zentralen Raum vom Kunstverein fast ausgefüllt und es war wie so, ein leeres, so eine leere Tribüne eben, auf der Veranstaltungen stattfanden und wo wirklich ganz explizit die Aktivierung der Skulptur eine zentrale Rolle gespielt hat. Zu den meines Erachtens ähm, spannendsten Arbeiten von Rita McBride gehören dann tatsächlich die Arbeiten, die sich direkt aus dem Stadtraum nähren. Da sind zum einen die Managers, das sind... Ähm, pulverbeschichtete Aluminiumskulpturen, sehr schlichte Objekte, deren Form angelehnt ist an Stromverteilerkästen, wie man sie eigentlich an jeder Ecke in der Stadt sieht, oder ihre Miniaturversionen ähm, von Parkhäusern, die sie in Bronze ausgeführt hat, aber auch in Stahl, ähm, die angelehnt sind an die architektonische Struktur von Parkhäusern, die, ähm, was ich eine erstaunliche Erkenntnis fand, doch sehr stereotyp und in sich gleichbleibend sind. Also es ist immer eigentlich dieses diese Abfolge von parallelen Riegeln und dann gibt es eben die Verbindungsrampen. Und genau diese Struktur hat Rita McBride aufgegriffen und in ihre Skulpturen übersetzt. Und ich finde, diese beiden Arbeiten sind ein Beispiel dafür, wie Rita McBride sich eben immer wieder ähm, Elementen im öffentlichen Raum widmet oder ihre Aufmerksamkeit äh, denen zugewandt hat und Strukturen isoliert hat, die immer ähm, auch so eine Schaltstellenfunktion hatten. Für mich persönlich ähm, haben die Re Arbeiten von Rita McBride den Blick auf die Stadt komplett verändert. Also es war wirklich, als ich die Arbeiten kennengelernt habe, wie so eine Seehilfe, also eine Neuausrichtung meines Sehens äh, beim Laufen durch die Stadt. Und mittlerweile kann ich fast gar nicht mehr umhin, als genau die Elemente, die Rita McBride mit ihren Arbeiten immer wieder aufruft, auch dann in der Stadt wahrzunehmen und zu sehen, wie arg die doch unseren äh, Stadtraum beeinflussen. Und deswegen finde ich es natürlich umso fantastischer, dass es jetzt eine permanente Arbeit von Rita McBride gibt hier in der Stadt und ähm, ja, die uns eben erhalten bleibt und die vielleicht genauso eine zentrale Funktion ähm, hier übernehmen kann. Und natürlich setzt auch die Mare West ähm, am urbanen Raum an. Sie alle haben natürlich Fotos gesehen. Ich hoffe, dass die meisten in der Zwischenzeit auch schon am Effner Platz waren und die aufgestellte Arbeit dort gesehen haben. Es ist eine 52 Meter hohe Carbonskulptur, die eigens für den Kreisverkehr am Effner Platz entwickelt wurde. Und soweit ich weiß, ist es auch die größte Carbonskulptur. Also es ist wirklich ähm, auch unter technologischen Gesichtspunkten eine ganz einzigartige Arbeit. Und Rita hat selber mal in einem Vortrag gesagt, ähm, bestimmt wäre das auch nur in Deutschland zu realisieren gewesen, mit dieser Präzision zu arbeiten und mit diesen fortschrittlichen technologischen Mitteln. Die Aufgabe der Skulptur sollte es sein, äh, dem Effner Platz Prominenz zu verleihen und eine Beziehung zu der sehr heterogenen ähm, öffentlichen Bebauung vor Ort zu, herzustellen. Das ist ja nicht eine ganz leichte Aufgabe, weil man auf der einen Seite eben das Hypo-Hochhaus hat, was 114 Meter hoch ist und dann am anderen Ende des Platzes 
ähm, dann eine zweistöckige Reihenhausbebauung. Also die Lücke ist relativ groß und genau diese vermittelnde Position nimmt die Mare West eigentlich ein. Und Rita hat sich eben für eine Struktur entschieden, ähm, die gleichzeitig auch die Situation am Effnerplatz äh, einbezieht, nämlich, dass der Platz in erster Linie ein Ort der Bewegung ist. Also es ist ein Platz, es ist der Kreisverkehr, um den die Autos herumfahren und an dem eben am Samstag dann auch die Tram ein, eingeweiht wird. Also es geht wirklich um, äh, um, diese, um diesen Aspekt der Beschleunigung und der Dynamik, der sich natürlich dann auch in der Drehung ähm, der Skulptur wiederfindet. Dabei waren Purismus und Reduktion immer ganz zentrale Kriterien für Rita McBride. Also die, ähm, die Struktur oder die Form der Struktur hat sich daraus ergeben, dass diese Drehung äh, der Stäbe zueinander einfach eine der schlichtesten Möglichkeiten ist, um Stabilität in diese Struktur zu bringen. Die Stäbe sind hohl, äh, bis auf im unteren Teil, wo sie eben aus Sicherheitsgründen verstärkt werden mussten. Und es ist eben eine Carbon-Struktur äh, und damit auch unvergleichbar, viel leichter als jede andere Konstruktion es an diesem Ort hätte sein können. Auf eine Art und Weise ähm, bezieht sich natürlich die Mare West auf Architektur und sie schafft das Ganze aber ohne selber Architektur zu sein. Und das ist eine ganz große Leistung und dadurch reflektiert sie eben auch auf den speziellen Ort, an dem sie platziert ist. Wie man sich leichthin vorstellen kann, und Sie alle haben es ja über die Jahre in der Zeitung auch mitverfolgt, die Realisierung war nicht so ganz einfach. Es hat gedauert, bis man das richtige Material gefunden hat, bis die Genehmigungsprozesse vollzogen wurden. Und man kann jetzt mittlerweile auf eine Zeitspanne von über acht Jahren zurückblicken, von der, also von der offiziellen Genehmigung des Entwurfs von Rita McBride bis zur Aufstellung der Skulptur im Januar diesen Jahres. Und am Samstag wird eben dann offiziell quasi äh, die Mare West äh, der Öffentlichkeit übergeben im Sinne von die Tramlinie 17 wird verlängert und in Zukunft vom Effnerplatz weiterfahren nach St. Emmeram. Es wird einen großen Festakt geben und damit ist im Grunde genommen dann äh, so das Gesamtkonzept für die Mare West vollendet. Entschuldigung. In diesem Zusammenhang möchte ich auch ganz herzlich ähm, die Kolleginnen und Kollegen von der Stabstelle Kunst im Münchner Baureferat begrüßen, allen voran Frau Oswald, aber auch die Kollegen Herrn Hofstetter, Herr Grünberger und Herr Spengler. Jetzt aber zu Alexander Hick und zu seinem Film Day After Day. Alexander ist 1985 geboren und hat Anfang dieses Jahres an der Kunstakademie in München abgeschlossen. Ähm, schon während seiner Zeit an der Akademie war es eben so, dass Film als Format, aber auch als Material ähm, für seine Arbeit ganz zentral gewesen ist. Und dann hat er sich eben entschieden, vor zwei Jahren ähm, auch an der Hochschule für Film und Fernsehen zu beginnen, wo er jetzt eben nach wie vor studiert, ähm, am Lehrstuhl für Dokumentarfilm beim Herrn Professor Stadler, den ich auch herzlich begrüße. Ähm, einige von Ihnen haben vielleicht schon unwissentlich eine Arbeit von Alexander Hick gesehen, und zwar äh, diesen Winter in der Pinakothek der Moderne in einer Dokumentarfilmausstellung, ganz fantastischer Bergsteigerfilm mit dem Titel Saint-Germain. Und ab nächster Woche, wer neugierig wird, ähm, kann ich nur empfehlen, in die Galerie Traversé zu gehen. Dort wird Alexander eben im Rahmen einer Gruppenausstellung weitere Arbeiten präsentieren. Day by Day, der Film von Alexander, ist ein Porträt der Mae West. Es ist gefilmt am Effnerplatz und um den Effnerplatz herum. Und Alexander hat hierfür Passanten und Anwohner interviewt, um herauszufinden, wie sich denn das tägliche Leben mit der Mae West gestaltet. Recht viel mehr möchte ich an dieser Stelle noch nicht sagen. Wir werden den Film jetzt sehen. Der dauert ungefähr 20 Minuten. Im Anschluss wird es ein Gespräch geben mit Rita McBride und mit Alexander Hick, was wir auf Englisch führen werden und ähm, hinterher haben Sie natürlich immer noch die Möglichkeit, Fragen zu stellen, wenn Sie es denn möchten, dann direkt an die Künstlerin oder an den Regisseur. Dear Rita, lieber Alexander, um, I want to warmly welcome you at the Haus der Kunst. I'm really proud and happy that we can host this evening here and I'm very curious to see more and learn more about the fabulous May West. Thank you. Yeah, also erstmal, um, we will switch to English now. I'm sorry for starting in German. I think that makes our conversation easier. First of all, thank you, Alexander. You've been working on the film literally until the last moment. And, and it's amazing that we can present the film so shortly before 
actually the tram will pass under the Maoist for the first time, as the gentleman from the tram service announced. Um, I know that the idea for this kind of documentary or interview film is actually an idea that you had, Rita, and um, I would I know that through an architect friend of yours, um, contact to the Hochschule für Film und Fernsehen was established, and that's when Alexander came in and applied for um, making this film. And so, Alexander, I wanted to ask you um, what made it interesting for you to make a film on the Maoist? Um, was there any, I don't know, did you like the, the work in particular? Was it anything about Rita's work? Was it the situation you were interested in? Or? Okay. So first of all, uh, thanks for inviting us here today. <laughs> thanks for coming. Um, thank you very much. There are some people that were behind or in front of the camera. Shirin, I saw, and Manu and Götzi. Thanks, first of all. Saxophonist, thank you. <laughs> and yeah, when, we, when I first started to think about this project, um, it was funny because when we were talking these days about it, um, I remembered that there was nothing actually to be seen when we first talked about the idea. I think that was September last year, yeah. So we were thinking about doing a film, but there was nothing actually at the place. So <laughs> I think that was interesting to me. And the possibility, I, was, I heard about this, pro this project and the sculpture and I was curious about it. So I went um, to see Efnerplatz and it was just basically, yeah, what did it look like? It was not green anymore, it was grayish. <laughs> There was big uh, construction sites at the drum, and I started to to walk around the sculpture, the, the place where the sculpture was supposed to be constructed, and I soon realized that there wasn't much of life or things that you really could capture um, at the at the place because it's like a transit place, like you said before, and and. Um, yeah, that was the beginning. Yeah, and uh, I mean, it's pretty difficult to make a film if the thing, uh, what it should be about, is just not there. And I mean, everybody knows the animations; we've all seen them many times. But still, there's of course a big uh, difference in quality. I was wondering um, because you told me that you had the idea to have um, really to trace basically a day around the Mae West. I mean, it starts in the early morning; it ends in the early morning. How did you start to develop this idea? without anything being there. Yeah, I think that came in the editing, this um, structure with the 24 hours. No, that's not true, it came before, it came during the shooting, but I wasn't sure whether it was a bigger time frame or it was 24 hours to be edited, like the final version of the film. But um, the idea was when we were investigating, I was working with Kasper Kaven, he did the camera. Unfortunately, he's not um, here tonight. A lot of this work that we saw is also his work, of course. Um, but the idea was to capture, to try to capture the first three days um, when the sculpture really was finished. So because it was a very long process of constructing and it was supposed to be constructed and it couldn't happen and yeah, it was a long way <laughs> until it finally stood there. And yeah, so we decided let's try to be there the first three days when, when the work is over because I kind of wanted to avoid to do a making of yeah. about the whole process. I wasn't interested in that. Yeah, but and then it's really also about the first impression that the people had of being confronted with Mae West. Yes, yeah, yeah. So I was interested in the social aspect of all of a sudden there is this thing constructed there and people reacting on it and, and trying to, for, to, to capture this first views on, onto the sculpture. Yeah, and I guess it's maybe not all that easy to get people. I mean, you've been saying that basically there's not much going on in terms of like people walking around. It's mainly cars, the tram is arriving. So how did you, I mean, literally, how did you do that? I guess it took quite a while to prepare mm. um, the, the, the shooting of the film. Yeah. The first curiosity came, I think, with the architecture that is around the whole sculpture, the different kinds of houses and different people living there. So that was the first idea to try to look to this different housing 
and yeah like the woman said in the interview there is this big villas and there is public housing and there is social housing there is this hotel right next to it so um yeah the idea came quickly to make to kind of try to make a visual portrait about Efner Platz and uh, the new Scott, what was your question? I lost track. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, it was like um, how, well, I lost track as well. Did I? <laughs> no, I'm sorry, no, how long it took you to prepare everything and how you got in contact with the people actually. Yeah, yeah, it, it was interesting because it's not a, I thought this is going to be easy because why shouldn't we talk about the sculpture or this project? But then in the end it wasn't sometimes so easy because many people were angry at the Platz, not about the sculpture so much, also sometimes maybe, but more because of the tunnel construction. So then they didn't want to um, appear in front of the camera and being related to this whole issue. So you could feel, um, I don't know how to say, but the, the crucial point of, of yeah, there's a lot of the habitants weren't happy about how things went yeah. the last years. And I think they felt kind of not asked mm -hmm. less about the sculpture project, but also about the whole mm -hmm. uh, construction of the yeah. tunnel and this kind of issues. Yeah. So then um, I talked to many people, but I, some of them I couldn't convince to, to speak in front of the camera. So we, uh, I arranged some interviews. I invited people to come and then being in this architectural places that we found so we i kept the places but sometimes i had to change the person the real persons for okay yeah people that i knew and i wanted to speak to them about the sculpture yeah and they were speaking what they were thinking about the sculpture or was it in any form scripted it was in one in um, the woman in the red um dress she's an actor she's an actress she was uh asked to, to uh, reproduce kind of uh, information, but the rest was spontaneously, yeah. Rita, a question to you. Um, I remember that you had, I mean, you really had the intention to have not only the making of um, documentation of Mae West, but you were really interested in having this interview situation with people. And I mean, basically you, you place, you're placing the sculpture there, you could leave it there. And I was wondering how comes that you were so interested in really having the voice of the people who are involved with it? Because I mean, we've been in touch and you were searching for someone who could do interviews all around the city, just with people to hear their opinions. I had forgotten that I, that I had said that to you, but now I remember that I, I was looking for someone to you know, generate um, certain kinds of conversations about public sculpture or about the possibility of public sculpture. Um, and, not, and, and since Efner Platz and the whole story was unfolding, I thought it was the right time, this was maybe a year ago also, to sort of help inform how we could form a film or, or how we could document um, this moment of when the sculpture was starting to become realized. I think, I mean, from the beginning, you know, the sculpture was um, was proposed as an empty monument, and, and I always believed that meaning would come from the inhabitants and the people around um, after Platz and the city of Munich. So, of course, I was always interested in the opinion, but also in, you know, in the nine years that we worked on the project that um, we had to answer many, many fears and questions and um, and you know from the neighbors from the neighborhood so they were already part of the process in terms of how how we were organizing the the possibility of realizing it the, um so it just seemed to also mirror that relationship with the process and and that in the democratic um kind of process that this was this very democratic process of course somehow all these voices should be articulated and visible and they become visible in the film and um, but I was also at that to at that time I was interested in trying to bring the level of the discussion to um, another le to another point I, w I wasn't sure what that point would be but I was interested in trying to get it out of the Eierbecker realm um, the kind of let's put some green plants there but to sort of talk about what the role of public sculpture and 
cultural monuments are within a city. So we're still trying to get that, but I think that's where I started with, trying to get some opinions that we could work with in the film. Yeah, and I think actually it works really nicely in the film because you've got all the aspects of it. And um, the, also the way you are, you are approaching my West, it really shows all the different aspects. So it's basically in a way it's like a double portrait. It's a portrait of the relation that people have to the piece and it's a portrait about how uh, the the West is presented as structure in a, in a structural context of the city texture. Um, maybe talking about the different perspectives on Mer West that you were giving, um, can you maybe explain which were the elements that you were particularly interested in? I mean visually but also in terms of content maybe. I think it all started with the, with the architecture because it is it, it fits into this architectural things uh, surroundings so because we didn't have the social aspect in the beginning I couldn't talk to the people that lived around the sculpture when the sculpture wasn't there or I didn't feel like so I was basically looking around and seeing what views could we get once the sculpture will be there so I think it came like the interest first came with the with the images and with the architectural um, combinations that we're going to have. But then, during the shooting, I was interested, of course, in the social aspect and not making just an architectural representation of, of Ethnoplatz. Yeah, yeah, I think it's really um, what uh, struck me most when I um, was seeing the film was the fact that suddenly I discovered so many relations that Mayor West has to the surrounding area. And uh, I particularly loved um, the part where you see um, the, the Freie Otto um, Olympia um, architecture and the Funkturm, and you really had the feeling that Mare West is able to become like one of these landmark buildings of which we don't have too many here in Munich. And I think that is, it's a great capacity and also that you're offering these different viewpoints is something that we could not have naturally as watching the film and I think that is uh, as watching the, uh, the sculpture I wanted to say and through the film it's really a, an amazing uh, translation of, of the capacity that the sculpture has. How much were you involved Rita? With film? Um, very little, very little <laughs> actually. Um, you know after the, the initial few talks that we had, you, you went right for it and you know pretty much then we had a rough cut for a long time which of course I saw many many times but it's all Alex and Casper and Milo. Yeah, yeah. who did the music for the film. Um, you've mentioned that you've been working with a very special camera for, um, yes. for this film and um, which gives some special qualities of the surface, uh, for instance, of my West or a special kind of image. Yeah, when, we, when I started to talk with Kasper who did the camera, we were talking about the different options that we had. We were thinking about shooting on uh, 60 millimeters on film stock to get the, this real colors that we still like a lot. <laughs> but. Then we decided to use the Alexa, which is a new um, cinema camera, it's digital and we decided to use this camera because I think when I saw the material this, uh, the sculpture is made of, it made, yeah, it made sense to us to use this very new and very crispy images to represent also this high-end, high yeah, very advanced material that the sculpture or that you used to to do the sculpture yeah Rita maybe you can um, I mean when talking about the qualities of my West of course there's the material aspect really this carbon structure which is beautiful also on the on this uh, on the surfaces appearance and I think then also um, just in terms of physical qualities what Alexander's film makes quite clear is the different relations that you have in terms of size and scale. How did you, I mean, how well did you know the Afnerplatz when you started? How much was that part of your thinking when you, when you began? It was very central to the thinking, so it wouldn't exist anywhere else in the way that it does, other than at Afnerplatz. Um, 
And of course, I mean, the, the original proposals were um, realizing that it wasn't a, a pedestrian area, that it was very, not going to be something that people experience at a scale when you walk by. So it's something that you see in a more cin cinemagraphic scale as you drive by or under or you come up to. So of course, I, I understood those, uh, that, that, those aspects of Esmerplatz, but also um, realized there was a kind of, well, also in, in the competition, the original competition, we were asked to give stature to that, that place. So, of course, I was thinking of how to give some something um, which didn't somehow um, became Efnerplatz without being extremely dogmatic, without really p saying in a very uh, didactic way what Efnerplatz is. So all of this helped me to arrive at, at, a, at a, a very simple structure, at a dimension which you know is, is exceptional in an exceptional material, and it's you know it, it's very exceptional that it's there. So all all of this is very exciting for me. Um, the dimensions, the dimensions, and and a lot of these details about how, um, sizes. I mean, it's gone. It's gotten fatter and thinner, and a little bit taller, a lot shorter. I mean, it's gone through a lot of different um, kind of possibilities through the nine years that we worked on it. Um, but um, and and in the end, I think that that was a part of the original proposal that it could in, that it could go through all this kind of very rigorous process. That it was a very simple structure that could still be there even if it was getting a lot of opinions thrown at it and a lot of needs of a bureaucratic or a city um, so that it could still have its have its stature without being um, didactic. So the hardest part for me was actually to conceptually defend this idea of emptiness, that, that the meaning would come over time and through a process. And as we had to really decide on a lot of details, I, I kept a very big di distance in a lot of it because I felt that many of the things would be decided because of, of how democratic the process was. So things like the height became an issue in ways I could never have imagined at the beginning of the proposal, even though, and there were certain things like the tram, which, I mean, the part of the reason it has 52 meters is because the tram now can go through the structure without any special articulation of a doorway. So it just seamlessly, all the life around Ethnoplatz just is there with the structure of, of the sculpture Mae West. Um, so a lot of the details started to, you know, happen as, as in this process, but the beginning was absolutely about certain um, observations I had about Ethnoplatz. Yeah, yeah, and I can imagine. I mean, uh, this uh, this idea of the empty monument is, of course, quite a challenging idea in a way because it gets to the very heart of what one conception of public sculpture could be. I mean, the question is, what do you want to propose to the public? And uh, I was wondering if you um, if you can um, talk maybe about your ideas. What do you think that public sculpture could could fulfill or would ideally fulfill is this entire talking about Mayweather's producing ideas or relations towards um, the sculptures. I assume that's a very important part um, for the work. I think it um, absolutely it's an important part. And at one point, when when there was you know a couple of times, it was pretty I was pretty sure that May West would not be built. I thought that it was anyway still functioning as a public sculpture because it was being discussed so often. Um, of course, I wished for a different level of discussion, or you know, that had more to do with this question of what what can uh, cultural, you know, what can um, art be in a public space? What how can culture manifest itself in a public realm? And um, and, and and I would I still you know don't have answers for that. I also don't even have really good questions about it. I'm still feeling the dissatisfaction and, and the impossibilities of how, of how these things can happen. But but then again, we did realize um, May West. So actually, things are really possible, and the optimism is there. And of course, I learned a lot of things along the way, which I think we could um, help. Um, somehow make this a more potent activity that, so that culture can be more visible in the fabric of a city um, and, and that it's not such an impossibility kind of in, in a structural way, um, that meaning um, the kind of levels of process which are 
very bureaucratic as, and as opposed to an artistic process and, and how those two come together is, is a fascinating and sometimes very dysfunctional uh, road. But, um, but, it's, but I, th I, I, st I really believe in it and I would, you know, I, I think um, maybe I have too much idealism, but I, I, I would love to keep trying to make this a very interesting and rich conversation and also have some successes, you know, real visual successes. Yeah, I think, um, I mean, luckily we have Mare West now and I think um, that it's really, um, it fulfills a lot of what you had in mind that it should do. I think Efna Platz has really become a place where you look at, I mean, nobody would have ever uh, looked at Efna Platz before, but through this entire discussion, I think it has changed the entire idea of how to read the city in this very special area and I think that is a, an immense achievement for work. To happen. I think it's um, pe people were very aware of Öffnerplatz. I was I was wondering. I didn't think so before, but I think it really changed the way people um, see this place. Because before, the most common thing I heard when I was talking to people was the Hypovereins building. Okay. So it was very famous for that and, and for Grand Westin and the hotel. And now I think it's changing, and and with the people that live in the close surroundings and they're kind of living in this museum now because they have an art object <laughs> right in front of their house. Um, it has changed the way people perceive maybe the place. Yeah. I think it's also going to become a very photographed plot now because I yeah. mean this this was something I'd never anticipated actually that after it was installed the, in January every time I went back to visit it there was a, there were a lot of cameras on this plot like everyone was photographing Always, it yeah. and it is quite photogenic luckily but, um, but I think this is a whole other level which I didn't really anticipate because I was I was very focused on more a discussion a discourse and then a a structure of sculpture, but this is why I'm very happy to have Alex, ha uh, you know, have have worked on such a nice film be because I think that a lot of the discussion, which didn't happen so far, maybe you know, can start to happen because because we now we have this film with this kind of very photogenic sculpture. That yeah, exactly, and I think it it has both the uh, the verbal level of uh, talking and thinking about. My West, but also the visual level of understanding my West, which I think is a great, great advantage in that context. Um, Alexander, another question to the title of the film. Um, the title. Yeah, you uh, you said that it's. I mean, it's called Day After Day, and uh, there's a reference to a Mayor West film, which is called Night at uh, Night After Night. Um, I haven't seen the film. I have to confess. Oh, great! Because I um, I was wondering <laughs> that was about that. Question. Yeah, no, I was wondering because, funny enough, um, I checked on YouTube, and the first clip I th I saw of uh, night after night was a group of ladies around a table, and they were great getting drunk, and. Um, mm -hmm then this film started to mirror, mirror the drunken gaze and you had like uh, these multifaceted perspectives and everything started to turn and I was really asking, is that precisely the scene that gave... Turning around the, the sculpture? Yeah, exactly. No, it wasn't. <laughs> I was very unsure about the title the whole way through and it even doesn't have titles now, the film. I have to apologize for that, especially for the people that participated maybe it will still we will still make some titles but I'm not sure because I like the idea that with this film people that live in the surroundings kind of together with the sculpture and um, create this visual space you could call it that we have and with this 24-hour structure if you put it in a loop in a gallery or whatever um, space I think it's a more interesting way to see the film than always you put in a title you will interrupt mm -hmm. this kind of flow um, yeah but the title I knew that my West also came kind of late into the sculpture project and so I was trying to find some reference to that and I found it with night after night mm -hmm. because I think the film makes one possible portrait in those surroundings but it could be a million different ones so this title day after day for me kept uh, yeah kind of transformed the idea yeah. that you could keep doing this for years walking around so you're gonna make keep yeah. making films <laughs> <laughs> let's see <laughs>
Yeah, I would really love to see it. Actually, I always thought, oh, 20 minutes, it's not enough. We need more of that because it's such a delicate and humorous portrait and it gives everybody the freedom to express their opinion but still is able to integrate all the qualities um, of the work and all, all the surrounding. I think it's a very uh, generous and open concept that your film has. Yeah, I think that the transparency of the sculpture in this sense works because there was nobody that said I don't I can't I can't speak about it or I can't tell you any associations or whatever in this way so always people started to talk which I found interesting yeah um, at this point, I would like to open um, to the public. If there are some questions, you're welcome to ask them. Thank you. <laughs> um, okay, my question was um, the. It is to Alexander Hick that. When you interviewed the people at the beginning, when they talked about their first impression um, for Mae West, they, some of them were kind of critical. And if you think you would ask them now or longer ago, then do you think their opinion about this changes? Or do you think they are maybe proud to have this in their um, environment because they think, well, this belongs to my home or something like that. Um, I can't really give an answer to this, I don't know. We should ask them again now. Yeah. <laughs> a sequel. Yeah. We'll have the time to do that on Saturday, I guess. But I had the impression that it's not that everything they were saying about it wasn't so much black and white. A lot of people, they always, they were critical, but they had at some point you could feel that they were, yeah, they were interesting in having this or talking about it at least. Yeah. There were some people really angry also, but in many ways it wasn't either this way or that way. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Any more questions? Um, how did the name Mae West came up? This is always my question. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, after all this time, I don't really have a great answer, but I, I mean, at least one that satisfies me, because it, in fact, um, Mae West, originally the project was entitled Tower, and this was became a very unacceptable, too determined kind of direction. So. At a point, I had to consider having an, an, another approach to the project, um, but I didn't have very much time to think about it. I think I, I felt, I remember I, it was a very short time that I had to change it. Um, um, I, I think, you know, I, I was trying to, in a way, experiment with um, the, I mean, architects have named buildings before after, like Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers is a Frank Gehry project in, in Prague, um, so I kind of had this celebrity idea in my head to try and um, see what could happen. If you, it was really an experiment. So when I put that title to the, the sculpture, it wasn't really specific, and and I didn't expect that people would start to understand it as a female figure. Or you know, I thought it was a much more of, of um, a loose kind of idea to put there and then everyone ran with it quite literally. I mean, this wasn't something that I intended uh, specifically, but I was never not against it also. I mean, I wanted something which was rather vague and see, to see what would happen and um, to see what kind of associations and meanings would start to bubble up from, from people's to hearing now a new title. And I never really understood how powerful titles are, actually. I mean, this was a big lesson for me. But, and um, and I, I, I never would have thought that, that images of the actress Mae West would show up in the newspaper next to, the, to, to a picture of the proposal of, of the sculpture Mae West. But I guess I was really naive. I don't know. I, I, I didn't see it as, as a literal um, position. So again, I'm still trying to defend something empty, so not with any meaning. So a lot of the things that I did 
or decisions that I made were, were kind of always about trying to let the process go on and, you know, and not, not get determined in one, into one um, very specific hole, let's say. And, and that was the most difficult thing. So I was constantly trying to keep, keep it all possible. Um, and May West was one of these very big moments, which in fact, it's a, it's a really good question, but I still don't have like a two sentence answer. It's a little bit still, I'm still trying to understand exactly what happened there, but something very big happened in the project when it went from a title like Tower to May West. Um, I remember there was a discussion between Jennifer Allen and a woman from the FAZ on, um, on the Mare West and um, Jennifer Allen was um, always repeating, ah, it's such an amazing piece and May West is such a great title, it would be fabulous if it could be a figure that was more known in Europe. But um, thinking backwards, I think maybe that was the great advantage of titling in Mare West because we don't have a clear reading. I think in America she's a very popular figure or much more uh, connotated figure than she's in Europe. And so basically, um, I don't know how many people really knew who Mae West is. And of course it popped up that visually it was this attractive woman and you could really place her next to the sculpture and everything. But basically it was not implying this one reading, less so than a tower would have had. And so maybe the great advantage of Mae West was not being that known here. But I mean, I, uh, she also was, is, you know, because she's from a pretty, I mean, a generation where very few of us can remember. I mean, I barely, I know that it's a celebrity name, but I can't, I didn't watch any of her movies growing up. Or she, she was already, t you know, too, she was not part of the, and I mean, how can you compete with Lady Gaga today? So you, <laughs> you have only Mae West, I mean, a vague idea that this is a celebrity and... And no, I was really hoping for this vague, um, you know, connotation. Nothing very specific, but but even in the U.S., she's not very well known. Okay, I had I thought Among that was anybody born in yeah. 1950 or you know younger. Okay, any more questions? Is May West supposed to stay naked, or are plants um, supposed to uh, grow upon it? <laughs> I think Christmas decorations are next. <laughs> yeah, I think we'll start with that on Saturday. <laughs> okay, um, if there are no more questions, then maybe my last question to you, Rita, is how does it feel? I mean, it's there now, and uh, Saturday will be like the final point, I mean, that's the conclusion to the entire process of, of putting the Maoist there. Well, it's um, an exceptional feeling. I mean, it's, a, it's like I keep using the word exceptional uh, um, today, especially but, uh, when, it, when, when, it, when it went up in, in last January, I was really speechless and extremely uh, happy. But this is not a good enough word because it was a, a huge feeling. Um, but more, more because it not, not because of an accomplishment of nine years and so many generous people and so much effort by a huge community, but mainly because I thought it, it was a beginning of something pretty exciting that you know that that we can we can you know live with this this sculpture and 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 it will transform many things I think over time I felt I felt this possibility so and I, and that's the feeling I still uh, have today when I see it and. Um, it, it's changing all the time, and I think it will continue to change. I think um, as people start to talk about it, but also um, as it begins to settle into that into the plots, and, and um, so now the feeling is fantastic. Excellent. <laughs> um, I think our feeling towards my West is fantastic as well. I'm really happy that uh, Munich can welcome her. So I hope it will be in a very decent manner. <laughs> Um, yeah, Alexander, thank you very much. Thank Rita, you. thank you. It was great having you here. Thanks for the invitation. Pleasure. Thank you.